Let's create worlds. In this tutorial, we're gonna discuss displacement scale, as well as noise texture detail, as well as noise texture scale. And we're gonna dive deeper discussing the mapping of the location of your procedural texture. And we're gonna cover the Muskrat texture, the Voronoi texture, the brick texture, the magic texture, and obviously the noise texture. Right, let's get started. Hey guys, today we're gonna to make procedural environments. The first thing we're gonna do is select the default cube, press X, delete, numpad seven for top orthographic view, press shift A, and we are gonna use a simple plane. Uh, press tab to go into edit mode, and once you're in edit mode, right click, subdivide, and then click over here and change the number of cuts to at least 100. Once you've done that, uh, you can press S to scale it and type in one zero. So you're scaling it by 10, S10 basically. And once you've done that, you can press tab to go back into object mode. Once you're in object mode, uh, the first thing you wanna do is go to our modify properties, add modifier, I'm gonna add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm gonna chuck this on three and you'll notice that uh, simple and cut more clock, there's almost no difference. It's because we have so many subdivisions that cut more clock can't round it out. And if the, the subdivisions are too high for your computer, you can use a lower amount. It should still work fine. The next thing we want to do is pull this up, and I'll show you why a few things that you need to do whilst you won't be able to do it. So I'm kind of troubleshooting things here for you as well. Press new over here to create a new material in your shader editor. And we're gonna call this material um, Mountain Displacement. And uh, I'm gonna use this material for everything. So normally this is where you would change the, the color of your, of, your, of your scene. But today we are not going to care for that. I'm gonna just go back quickly and do, here we go. We'll pull this out here, lift this all the way up here. We're gonna strictly work with the displacement. So I'm gonna press Shift A, and we are gonna type in, in the search bar, this placement. And if you followed along on my asteroid tutorial, we worked with a completely different method. This is a completely different method to what I've shown you in the past. Both are useful. Right, so now that we've got this displacement, we need to connect it to a converter. So we're gonna go to press Shift A again, and we're gonna to go to our converters, and we're gonna use a color ramp. And we're going to connect this color ramp to the height because we want to get the height of our mountains to, to show. But now we have to decide what are we going to use to create this height. We need to use some sort of texture to create the difference. Now we could import an image, which I'll show in another tutorial. But in this case, we're going to use a procedural texture, which in this, this case we'll use noise and then we'll mix it up with other procedural textures to show you how it works. We're going to connect the, you can use the color or the factor. It shouldn't make a difference, but I'm connecting the color to the factor. And now you have to go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons. In the search bar, make sure that you got Node Wrangler ticked enabled. Very important. So then you can just press, uh, click your mouse over here and press Control T. And you'll get these things pop up nice and easy. Right, so one thing that you need to know off the bat, um, if we go to Options here, there's certain options missing that we need. Or if we go to Materials and we scroll all the way down to settings is options that are missing i'll show you how to get the right options to appear you just go to your render viewport and change from ev to cycles and i want to just change this to gpu compute and then we can go back here and if we scroll down to settings again all of a sudden we have bump only displacement only or displacement and bump you need to use either displacement only or displacement and bump i prefer working with displacement and bump i think it looks a lot nicer that's just my personal preference but you can use either displacement or you can use displacement and bump, but you cannot use bump only. Right, so once you've done that, you'll notice over here in the options, if you want this menu to appear, you can just press N. Um, in the settings over here, you can see the options are here, displacement and bump, N, minimizing that. All right, now that we are set up, you still can't see anything because we need to change to our render viewport. There we go, now we can see some sort of change to our scene, which we can only ever see in our render viewport. Now, what do we do? Well, number one, uh, we need to decide how much we want to push this this way. And push a little bit more. So we'll, we'll maybe push it like that for now. Uh, let's put it on 0 0.5, just to make it easy. 
And once we got this on 0.5, we need to mess with the height. Let's put the height on 5. Okay. Now, the reason why it looks so funny looking and there's no detail, in fact, I'm going to put this on 7.5. The reason why this looks so funny looking and doesn't look detailed is because we need to go to our noise texture and increase the detail here. Let's put this on 20. And just like that, we have beautiful, beautiful rock that we can only see in our render viewport. If we go to solid viewport, pretty much nothing is there. All right, so now that we've got this, another thing we want to do is we want to get this back to the right level. So we're going to put the MIDI level over here to zero. So it's in the right place. And we can also maybe view how this looks from our camera. Obviously, we see nothing if we're not in render view. And I'm just gonna chuck this over here and press numpad seven and just adjust the camera accordingly. Uh, I think this should be fine. And now all I need to do is press rotate. Pad seven. There we go. That's good enough for me. And uh, just to make it simpler, there we go. So this is what we see in our scene. All right. So now that we've got this, let's click back on this over here, which is our scene, which we can only see in Cycles Render View, what's the next thing we can do? Well, if we want to mess with the height, we can just scale this up over here, we can make the peaks higher. If you want to change the variation, you can just change it over here. Let's just look from the top. The reason why we're moving black is because if we move it enough, we get a flat surface. And that's where you might want to have a pathway or an ocean. Or, um, if that makes sense, or a river. All right, and uh, separate to that, uh, if you wanna increase or decrease the detail of your peaks, let's just zoom in. Um, just, yeah, you just adjust this, so we can make this two, which looks like that, or we can make this 50, which is overkill. I think uh, 20 is more than good enough, with more than enough detail. The next thing you might wanna adjust, just to show that it is a procedural, landscape is the location because this procedural element that normally you would see over here but because we did it over here you don't uh, see it the way we normally do this but it's the same rules apply if we move the location we can move this location to infinity and it will create different variations and looks and peaks of mountains which is quite cool so you get all this variation you can also just move this all around like crazy and get a very a unique look if you mess with the scales, you'll mess with the proportions of the peaks, which you can do if you want them to be flat, um, wider, or whatever the case may be. But I, I like how it looks naturally. So I don't tend to mess with this, but let me just show you. See, I don't, that's too flat. And it's, it's in relation to the Y and Z axis. So I'm just leaving everything on one, one, one. It just looks nicer for me at least. The other thing we probably want to do is click on our light source, change it to five and turn it to sun or maybe let's change it to one, that should be fine. So everything is kind of lit up nicely. And just for interest's sake, let's click on this and press N. If we change this to displacement only, this is what you get. Everything is still there, it looks right. You can zoom in, it looks good. But when you add the bumps and the displacement, in my view, it just looks so much better. And uh, in future tutorials, I'll show you how to add materials to this the correct way. But before we move on, let me show you some of the other cool things you can do. Um, I don't really mess with distortion, but you can. But um, I haven't really gotten anything that I particularly like from it. So I tend to leave this off. Uh, the roughness is quite interesting. Uh, so if we make this zero, it looks like this, too smooth. Or if we make it put on one, it's too jagged where 0.5 is perfect. And the detail is just as you know what the detail does. And the scale, if we make this 10, however, if we make this one, it's 
like this. So I think for me in this case I liked what I saw at 5, which was this. Alright, the next thing we want to do is press Shift A and we're going to click on textures and we are going to use a brick texture. These are all procedural textures, so all you need to do is you can connect it here to the vector, connect the color to the factor. Now you've got this weird uh, low poly city built within seconds. And yes, much like everything else, let's just turn the offset on zero. Much like everything else, we can also play with things here. and you can get all sorts of interesting variation, but I'll leave it on one. And you can also adjust the scale here. So you might want to say, I want lots, I want a whole city in here. So you put maybe 10 or 100, which will be probably overkill. Um, two, I want to leave it on five. And you can also have the max uh, height and stuff. So we might say, let's put this on one, 0.0, .0 0 0.1, that's even smaller, 0 0.04. And we can also adjust the smoothness, put this on 0, or we can make it 1. I think 0 0.1 is fine. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of things you can play around with over here. That's interesting. So. 0.5, 0, 1. Okay, anyways, I'm going to stop playing with this one. I don't use that one too often. We're going to use another one now. Now we could use an environmental texture, which we won't do in this example, but we can use the Voronoi texture, which is a very common texture to use in Blender for many things because it is insanely uh, productive. All right, so the first thing we want to do is decide if we like this height. Well, for this specific thing, maybe we want to make the height five. And we've got this interesting abstract art Voronoi pattern. You can create an abstract art uh, environment for a video game within seconds. Like this is the basics of it laid out and you can still texturize it and add things to it. And uh, once again, um, everything is adjustable or you can go crazy, you can see, you know what? Let's do smooth F1. <laughs> Let's go F2. Let's go distance to edge, which would be nothing in this case. And uh, I'm going to go back to F1. And you can mess with the scale here. You can say, Let's make it 10. Now you have even more stuff in here. Or let's make it 20. That looks like a gigantic city. And let's make the randomness 0.5. I snap 10, just like that. But if you make it too big, you can start seeing some sort of pattern, but it's still hard to tell. The randomness is high enough, I guess. But I think you get the idea. But then you get the crazy stuff here. You can change this to Manhattan. One, five. Now this looks like a nice rocky, potentially rocky mountain. All you need to do on top of this is, um, Let's right click, shade smooth. I don't like this so much. I'd want to want to change that. I have to get back to you on that. But you get the idea. There's, there's many different variations you can create there. What other procedural textures do we have? We could use Muscraft. Now this one tends to work better on lower size when I tested it. Let's just add it in here quickly. And let's make the scale. In. and let's add the detail 20 and let's add well that stuff we won't have to mess with in fact let's change it to multifractal and now it's going in the opposite direction now one way we can fix this is bring this all the way here and bring this possibly yeah I guess not I guess not let's try rigid Five. 
one, three. Let's go back here. Let's leave this on zero point five. And let's change to FBM. But you kind of just have to play around with this stuff until you find something that you like. It just takes time. But it's all once again, it's all procedural. You can also mess with this and get all sorts of different variations built within seconds. All right, what else do we have? I think you get the idea. I mean, this is an extremely um, valuable tool for anyone to build whatever they like. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial about uh, procedural, um, using procedural um, textures to create procedural, uh, a procedural environment. In the future, we will show you how to paint this, how to add Mantaflow liquids to, the to a simulation like this to make it look even more cooler. But for now, I think this is a good starting point just to introduce you to all that is required to create your own procedural environment. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.